Welcome to Chantwell. My name's Michael, and I'm building a 1960s concrete market precinct on my N-gauge model railway. I've almost finished the side of the building that runs along High Street. Being made in forced perspective, this was a bit of a challenge, but I think it's starting to look good. Let's take a look at making a forced perspective row of shops. I used the free drawing software Inkscape to make the overall shape of the forced perspective street. I described this process in a previous video, so I won't go over it all again. Suffice to say, it took a lot of trial and error to make it a shape that works well enough from more than one vantage point on the layout. I am basing the building on the market at Shipley in West Yorkshire. I spent some time drawing the overall shape of the building. With one frontage done, it was a case of duplicating it and making a street of identical units. The two on the right are four storeys high to help hide the back scene transition where the high street fronts stop. Once I had the overall outline, I could then arrange them into a street and give each one some individuality. I used photos of Shipley and Google Street View to come up with some shops typical of this kind of location. Although almost invisible on the final model, I took time to give the often mentioned Chandwell Advertiser a logo. And front page news is the smashed window in the bookies. I've not tried to represent lettering on glass before, but thought I'd give it a try on the photo shop and the curtain shop. I used the Inkscape perspective function to translate the street into four separate shapes. Inkscape cannot alter graphical textures, so I exported the perspective shape and the rectangular texture as separate images. I then used the website Photopia to manually stretch the texture into place over the template. Back in Inkscape, I could then arrange them to the shape that I wanted. I overlaid this with some semi-transparent graduated fills to reduce the colour saturation and make it appear a bit faded to represent distance. I printed the component twice onto an A4 sticky label. I stuck one to acetate and then used my usual sticky label method to remove the parts that are glass and leave the window frames in place. The second layer was for the items in the windows. The newsagent and Photoshop will have interiors modelled but also have posters in the windows. I repeated the window cutting for these two shop fronts, but this time left the window items in place. I was left therefore with a lower layer with the two shop fronts glazed, and a layer with all of the windows glazed. This drops on top of the other. And we have accurately placed posters in the shops, which will have interiors. All other windows are just left black. I used PVA glue to layer them together. The forced perspective road curves quite a lot as part of the illusion. The two layers of acetate need to bend into shape, and ideally before I do anything else. I cut a bit of 1mm card to the correct shape, and then used super glue to hold the acetate in the right place. Once that was done, I could add the textured layers on top of the labels. I did this by printing four more copies of the sheet onto photo paper. I cut out the windows from the first copy. I tried to keep as many of the concrete columns as I could, but they eventually got just too thin. I glued this onto the shaped street with PVA. I repeated this with another layer, this time just containing the concrete columns and the shop signs. I added the photo shop's banner next. I was keen to add the concrete awning that runs along the full building. I had no idea how to make this. It goes through four perspective changes, up a hill and round the back of the street. I just used my scalpel and carved a bit of 1mm card to what may or may not have been the right shape. And I generally hoped for the best. I couldn't even think of a way to hold it in place so I could test what it looked like. So accepting that I may be making a big mistake, I just glued it on using Uhu and crossed my fingers. I think it looks okay. As with everything forced perspective, it always looks a bit wrong depending on where you're looking at it from. But for me here, good enough is good enough and I think it's definitely good enough. I printed the pavements onto sticky labels and stuck these onto half millimeter card. I cut them out oversized because I knew I'd made some in-place adjustments to the road as I was sticking it down. I test fitted them and made adjustments until they fit the space properly. And I was eventually left with three pieces of pavement. I wrapped these with scale scenes pavement texture before gluing them into place on the layout. So here is the finished piece. It's an unusual shape and it's definitely the strangest looking model I've ever made. Because it is important to get this lined up properly, I decided to glue it into place now before building the rest of the market. I used Uhu for this and I held it in place 
making adjustments as the glue went off. So I'm left with the first wall of the market building in place. It more or less finishes the forced perspective part of the layout. It's far from perfect and there are parts I would do differently next time, but I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's a lovely backdrop to the layout and it helps enhance the sense of depth. I still need to add the other side of the tall section and the interiors of the news agents and the photo shop. Before I do that though, I'm going to get the back of High Street into place along the back scene. In case you missed it, here's a look at the overall plan for this part of the town. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss any of the market build, please press subscribe and click the bell icon to receive a notification from YouTube when the next video is ready. Until then though, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.